So in this video, we're going to introduce angular momentum. And before we do that, let's just go back over some stuff and um, just think about everything in linear motion. And we have an analogy for angular. And we're gonna use that to build up our angular momentum. Like for position, uh, linear position is X, and then we switch it over to angular, and acceleration becomes angular acceleration. Force is torque, mass is inertia. We can put those then together into equations. So like for kinetic energy, for linear, it's one half mv squared, but mass is analogous to uh, rotational inertia, and the velocity is rotational, so we end up with the same. So anyway, we're, we're going to use this. Um, it just makes it convenient because we use different symbols, but the equations are all the same in the setup. So just to review lo linear momentum, um, if we have a mass moving in a in linear motion at some velocity, then we define the momentum P to be the product of the mass and the velocity. Okay, so now angular momentum. And first we're gonna look at a rigid object. So here's a rod or something rotating in the XY plane about the Z axis. Then we can define the linear momentum. Um, instead of P, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use L. L will be the linear, the angular momentum. So we'll call this linear momentum and angular momentum. We use L for angular. Um, and instead of mass, well, mass is inertia. And instead of velocity, we're going to use omega. So it's just the rotational inertia times the angular velocity that will tell us the angular momentum. So not a big leap, um, just getting used to it. Um, and a point mass. Point mass is a little different. So a point mass, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the, the linear momentum, um, which is P, and we cross it with the displacement vector R. So we're also going to define linear momentum, I'm sorry, angular momentum, I'm going to keep saying that, is going to be just R cross linear momentum. And this tells us a little bit because L is a vector, so we need a direction here. This doesn't tell me much about direction, but this does. Because remember, even though this is a point mass, this thing is actually just a whole bunch of these things. And so um, if we cross two vectors in the xy plane, then according to the right hand rule, the resultant vector is perpendicular to it and it's gonna be in this direction. That's for motion this way. So using the right-hand rule, we would curl in the, in the y uh, x plane, and so the angular momentum vector would be uh, perpendicular, and it would be right along the z-axis. The same in this case. So the angular momentum is perpendicular. So it's just like torque. Um, the momentum of this rod would be pointed in the z direction. So these are our two equations. They're equivalent. It just depends on what you're talking about. So point mass, you just R cross P, which remember it's a cross product, so that's just R MV uh, sine theta. Uh, theta is the angle between the, so that's between the R and V vectors. So either way, you could go this way or you could extend it out and measure it this way. Um, and if it's a solid object, well, then we need the rotational inertia. Of course, you can combine stuff and do some other stuff with it. Okay, then that leads us to our last thing, Newton's second law. So let's, uh, let's go back to linear. So net force is mass times acceleration. However, we can redefine acceleration as the time derivative of velocity. And then this top portion, you end up with mass times the derivative of velocity with respect to time. And mass times the derivative of velocity is the derivative or the rate of change of momentum with respect to time. And so the net external force according to Newton's second law is the rate of change of momentum over time. And this, uh, like I told you before, this is the way he actually wrote about it. We changed it over to acceleration. 
So we can actually do the same thing over for uh, Angular stuff. So instead of net force, Newton's second law for Angular is net torque is going to be instead of mass, it's rotational inertia times the angular acceleration. And so we'll see that the inertia times angular acceleration is the derivative of angular velocity with respect to time. You can see the derivation is exactly the same. We're just changing all of the variables to their uh, counterparts in angular. And so we get omega with respect to time, which we defined as L. So the net torque is going to be the rate of change of the angular momentum with respect to time. That's Newton's second for angular momentum instead of acceleration. All right, um, so I guess we could, I'll do one example and then we'll just give you the practice set. Again, it's just knowing these equations basically. Okay, so in this example, we're looking at a jet engine fan. We're given the moment of inertia about its axis of rotation. I'm not going to try to draw, if, well, I'm going to try to draw it, but. Um, whatever. I should have drawn this before, sorry. All right, that's a terrible fan. Okay, but it's spinning, um, we'll say this in this direction. It's starting up, so it's starting to spin, and it's spinning in the, in the we'll say the xy. So the momentum is pointed out of the screen. Okay, anyway, the angular momentum is given by uh, this function. So 40 radians per second squared times t squared. We want to know the angular momentum is a function of time and then find its value at 3 seconds, and then the net torque is a function of time, and then 3 seconds. So A, the angular momentum as a function of time. Well, L is uh, simply the rotational inertia times the angular velocity, and so we can get the um, angular momentum, which is 2.5. I'm going to leave the units off just for brevity times the uh, function 40 t squared and 2.5 times 40 is 100 t squared. So there's your uh, angular momentum as a function of time. Now to get it at uh, 3 seconds we just substitute and we're done. So 100 times 3 squared. So that would be 9, so 900. Um, oh, that's kilogram meters squared per second. Okay, so now the direction again is out, right along this this direction. So we want to find now we want to find the net torque. Um, so B. So this would be Newton's second law. So the net torque is going to be the derivative of the momentum with respect to time. So we get the derivative um, with respect to time of 100 t squared. So we get 200 t. Um, and then at time uh, three seconds, so the net torque at three seconds would be 200 times three. So 600 and those are Newton meters. So there you go. A little bit of calculus, not too heavy. Just using the equations. Um, uh, we'll stop there.